let's talk about Class B. You've probably heard the tip that if you're flying in Class B airspace, think big. Now that might be the case in some countries such as the US, but here in the Philippines, it's a bit different. Take this not so big airport as an example. Plaridel Airport is a small general aviation airport located north of Manila's Ninoy Aquino International Airport and its 5 nautical mile surface aerodrome traffic zone or ATZ is actually Class B. Class B airspace is typically established around the busiest airports in the country with an aerodrome traffic zone or an ATZ. The ATZ is a relatively small portion of the airspace around a busy airport which normally extends outwards with a mere 5 nautical mile radius from the airport reference point and vertically from the surface up to 2,000 feet AGL. Traffic separation in Class B is provided for all aircraft, meaning both IFR and VFR, and therefore radio communication is required prior to entry. While technically there is no speed limit imposed within Class B, remember that whenever flying below 10,000 feet MSL in Class G, D, or C, 250 knots indicated is the maximum speed limit, and unless you have prior clearance to operate with no speed restrictions below 10,000 feet, it would be impractical to suddenly come charging into the 5 nautical mile ATZ high speed during an arrival. So whenever you encounter Class B, instead of thinking big, think B for busy. Finally, let's look at Class A. While U.S. textbooks define Class A as an airspace extending from Flight Level 180 to Flight Level 600, Class A in the Philippines start from Flight Level 200 up to Unlimited. Only IFR traffic is allowed and separation is provided for all aircraft with air traffic control service. There is no speed limitations and naturally radio communication is required. An ATC clearance is definitely a requirement prior to entering Class A airspace. Given this definition, we can therefore say that VFR flights are legally allowed up to altitudes as high as 19,500 feet only 500 feet below Class A. However, this may not be a practical idea. Remember that below flight level 290, ATC separates traffic with spacing of at least 1,000 feet. So if you find yourself in a high-performance aircraft and prefer to fly VFR up at altitude in uncontrolled airspace, it is recommended to stay at least 1,000 feet below flight level 200 since IFR traffic can be cleared as low as flight level 200 and you would want to give yourself some space from potentially high speed and sometimes heavy conflicting traffic. But Class A does not end there. If you take a look at the Philippine AIP on the en route section part 1.4, the Airspace Division table says that even oceanic airspace and ATS or air traffic service routes are also designated as Class A. So what's oceanic airspace and what are air traffic service routes? According to ICAO, the term oceanic airspace applies to airspace over the high seas that is above the oceans of the world beyond the territorial limits where the responsibility for the provision of ATC services is delegated by ICAO. Basically, any airspace that lies outside the Philippine FIR and not under the authority of any regional FIR of another country is oceanic airspace. For example, the airspace east of the Philippine FIR boundary is under Oakland Oceanic Control. Typical oceanic airspace begins at flight level 65 up to unlimited. How about air traffic service routes? Well, an ATS route is defined as a specified route designed for channeling the flow of traffic as necessary for the provision of air traffic services. 
air traffic service routes are basically stretches of airspace corridors 10 to 50 nautical miles wide and these are more commonly known as the airways. These highways in the sky also feed IFR traffic into the TMAs and thus the Civil Aviation Authority determined that ATS routes which are located outside TMAs are all Class A regardless of altitude. ATS routes located inside TMAs below flight level 130 blend into and become Class D the moment the route penetrates the TMA boundary in order to accommodate VFR traffic into the airport. This means that for the VFR pilot, even though he may find himself outside control airspace in Class G, there may be a possibility that Class A ATS routes 10 to 50 nautical miles wide are crisscrossing below flight level 200. You then need to know where these airways are so you can avoid them when flying VFR. We'll tell you later about the most effective reference materials you can use to determine what kind of airspace you may find along your flight path that may be helpful to you during flight planning.